Hey, welcome. Here's a little introduction to the compound microscopes that we'll be using in biology class this year. Quick rundown of the parts that we'll need to know. This is the eyepiece. Um, it contains a lens that has a 10x magnification. It allows us to see things 10 times greater than their actual size. Uh, there should be a set screw in here that keeps the eyepiece in place. So please don't remove it from the uh, from the eyepiece holder. Uh, the eyepiece also contains what's called the ocular lens. So the ocular lens is in here. Uh, this is what we look through. Make sure that your eyepiece is clean. There is lens paper in the lab for you to wipe off the lens because sometimes they do get a little contaminated and dirty from many eyes viewing through them throughout the day. So as we look through here, what we're going to see is an image that's reflected from a mirror inside the nose piece. So this nose piece contains um, a section that revolves around. So sometimes it's referred to as the revolving nose piece. Most of our microscopes contain three different objective lenses. The three objective lenses include the smallest lens, which is called the scanning lens. The medium size lens is called our low power lens. And our high power objective is the largest or the longest of the three. That's called the high power objective lens. So when we view an object, we always want to make sure we start with our scanning magnification. And we will lock the scanning lens into position and put it into the revolving nose piece where it clicks in. We also want to make sure that our stage, which is what holds our specimen in place, is all the way down to the bottom by turning the course adjustment knob. So the course adjustment knob allows us to raise and lower the stage. So we always want to begin by viewing with the stage all the way down, and we always want to start on scanning power. Our scanning power has a magnification of 4x, which is multiplied by the magnification of our eyepiece, which is 10x, to give us total magnification of 40. So we always start with that. When we put an object onto our slide, we use what's called a glass slide. The glass slide gets set on the stage, and it gets locked in to your stage with stage clips. So the stage clips are designed to keep your slide from moving around. So again, we start focusing by bringing the slide up towards the objective lens until we can actually view it in focus. And now we are ready to adjust to low power. So once it's in focus, we switch the revolving nose piece to our low power objective. The low power objective has a magnification of 10x, which gives us a total magnification of the 10 times the 10x of the eyepiece of 100x total magnification. Now I might need to adjust again using my course adjustment knob to bring it into focus. And if I can see the entire thing in my field of view, I'm good to go. I might be able to draw this, make observations of the object under low power. If I want to see more details and more depth, I can switch to high power. So to do the switch to high power, it's very important that you view from the side, switch to high power without dropping your stage down, because the objective lens will be very close to your glass slide. So view from the side the side switch to high power and now once you're viewing you should be able to see an object that's not quite in focus so to get it into clear focus we want to use the fine adjustment knob so the fine adjustment knob is the small one and this allows us to see the fine details of the object that we're viewing once we have it in focus here that's the greatest magnification that we can see with our compound microscopes 10x for the eyepiece 40x for our high power. So 40 times 100 is, you got it, 400 times their actual size. So we can see microscopic organisms using our compound microscopes that we use here at Arrowhead. A couple other parts of the microscope that we should be aware of. Underneath the stage is a diaphragm. The diaphragm um, allows us to control the amount of light that's being projected from the light source. So the light source that we have on our microscopes is controlled by a power supply, which is built into these units. We turn the switch, it projects light up through the diaphragm. If we have too much light on our object, we can adjust the diaphragm. 
Each microscope is slightly different in how you can adjust it. This one has a slider control, so you can slide this lever back and forth and allows more or less light to be projected on your specimen. Some of them have a dial on the side of the stage that you can switch. So once I adjust my light, I might be able to see a little bit more depth and detail using the diaphragm's control setting. The other parts of the microscope that you should be aware of, obviously the base. So the base of the microscope supports the entire unit. When you transport a microscope from the cabinet to your lab table or back to the cabinet, it's very important to always carry it by the base with one hand and you grab this support arm with your other hand. So we always carry microscope by the arm and the base with two hands. When we are finished, it's best practice to take your cord, unplug it from the outlet, and wrap the cord around the base. Tuck the cord in so it's not hanging loosely when you are walking, and transport it back to the storage cabinet. Um, if you are asked to leave the microscope out, please unplug it from the outlet just to make sure the light is not going to be on when it's not being used. So those are the structures of the microscope that you should be familiar with. Uh, these are the ones that you're going to be asked to utilize throughout the entire semester in biology. So become familiar with it. Talk like a biologist when you're doing lab work and know the different structures and the parts of a microscope to use in class. The next thing I want to demonstrate to you is how do we go about preparing a slide to use in the lab? Well, there's several different techniques that we can use. One of them is called making a wet mount. So a wet mount is made by taking a clean glass slide and adding a drop of water. So I have a drop of pond water that probably has many little different microscopic organisms in it. And I'm going to place two drops on the slide. And I'm then going to place a cover slip over the top of it. So the cover slips are very fragile, they're made out of glass, and you should handle them by the edges to prevent fingerprints showing up on the glass. So make sure they're clean, and when you place it on your glass slide, you want to simply hold it on a 45 degree angle until the water touches the edge of the slide or the cover slip, and then drop it down gently to prevent any type of bubbles from forming. So I just made my first wet mount, I now can take the wet mount and place it on my slide. I can use my stage clips and click it into position. And of course, I will start with my course adjustment and try to find the image that I'm looking for. So once you're focusing on the image and you find it under scanning power, then you can adjust to higher magnification as well. Sometimes you are asked to put larger objects onto a slide in order to view them. So here's the other practice to use when you're making a wet mount of something that's a little bit larger. Place a drop of water on the slide and then take the object that you're going to view and either tear off or cut off a small piece. So let's say I want to look at the leaf structure of this particular plant. I can take a scalpel and cut a very small piece of this plant leaf. So cut off a small piece, and instead of using your hand to try to handle something so small, use a forceps, place it right on top of the drop of water, and then again you go through and take your cover slip and place it over the top of the specimen using the 45 degree angle until it hits the drop of water, and then drop it on there. So you'll notice that there is some room or gaps underneath the cover slip. So if you need to add a little bit more water to your slide because it's not fully submerged, add the drop of water to the side of the cover slip and it will pull the water underneath the cover slip and then you can view this underneath the microscope. Now, one of the things that you need to be cautious about if you're trying to view something under high power when you have a cover slip on, you want to make sure that you view from the side when you're switching to high power. So I can find the object under scanning power. So there's the leaf structure, and I can see lots and lots of leaf cells. I can then adjust to low power, and I can bring it into focus. And then if I wanted to go to high power, I can simply adjust to high magnification, and you'll see that there's not much of a gap between my cover slip and my slide. 
and now I specifically use the fine adjustment knob to bring in the specific details that I'm trying to identify. So there's a quick overview of how to use a microscope in biology class. You'll be using these tools all year long, so make sure you are acquainted and speak the language of a biologist. Thanks very much.